So today I thought I'd just talk a bit about this Casio calculator. A lot of my students really like it for algebra and trig, and I'm, I'm sure students in calculus may like it as well. Uh, it doesn't do graphing, uh, but it's, you know, it's a $15 calculator, something like that. So it's not, it's not your $120 graphing calculator or something. Uh, so it's very useful in lots of ways. Let me start by introducing you to um, the fraction button. There's a fraction template here, and this allows you to type really complex things in the numerator and really complex things in the denominator without using a lot of parentheses. You know, you might use the quadratic formula, for example, and have something like 4 plus, and then it has a square root button, so you could do square root of uh, 4 squared minus 4 parentheses 1 parentheses 2. So that's the numerator of something you might get with the quadratic formula. Hit the over arrow here on this blue circle and then down and then you can get to the denominator and you can do something like 2 parentheses 1, right? And so this is something you might do with a quadratic formula and you can just hit equals here. And you can see not only does it simplify it, but it gives you the answer with the simplified square root form, which is really nice. Um, and not only that, if you don't like that, say you do want a decimal, you're solving some word problem where you need the decimal answer, there's this really handy feature here, the S to D button. Uh, I'm not sure what the S stands for, but this converts between, between fractions and decimals and square roots and decimals, so the D means decimal. If you hit that, it will convert it to a decimal for you, or if you hit it again, it will convert it back. So you get an exact answer, and you get an approximate answer, okay? So that's one nice feature. You've got the fraction button, you've got the square root button, you've got the conversion to decimal button here. Um, now, another thing is, uh, let's say you do 9 divided by some fairly large number on this calculator when you first get it. Now here it shows it as a fraction, that's nice. We could convert that to decimal. And you can see here that when it converts to decimal, the default for this calculator is to put it in scientific notation. So if you don't like that, then you can easily change it. We're going to change the setup here. So since setup is in orange, we have to hit the shift button first. So I'll do shift setup. And there's a normal mode under number 8. So I'm going to select normal mode under number 8. And the default is normal mode number 1, and that's scientific notation. So I'm going to change that to a 2. So I'm going to come down here and hit 2. Now, when I convert this to decimal, now it gives me the decimal that maybe I'm more used to seeing without the scientific notation. Um, you know, if you, still, if you still divide by a really big number, though, let's say something like this, it's going to write it in scientific notation simply because it can't fit all those zeros on the screen in standard notation. So be aware that it does that. All right, another really nice feature is this log button here. If you're doing some algebra or anything, there's a log base 10 and a natural log, which is base E, but there's a log of any base. So if you hit that, you can literally do a log base 2 by typing a 2 in for your base, hit your right arrow, then for your argument, you can do whatever you want. So you can do things like log base 2 of 3 equals, and it gives you a decimal approximation. So that's really nice as well. For trigonometry, there's a nice feature. If you, I don't know if you can see this here. Let me see if I can focus a little bit and try to hold it still. There's a D at the top. That means it's in degree mode. If there were an R there, that would be radians mode. So you can easily change your mode by going to the mode button. Uh, sorry, I'm wrong. There's a DRG button down here on answer. It's in orange, so I have to hit shift. DRG means degrees, radians, and gradient. So I'm going to hit shift, come down here, and then I can choose what I would like. So for example, if I want to find the sine of 60 degrees, I can do sine of 60. And now I just literally type in degrees under my DRG button here. So I'm going to choose 1, that's degrees. 2 is radians, by the way. And then I'll close my parentheses, and it will give me the sine of 60 degrees in fraction form with the square root. If I want decimal, I can convert it easily. All right. You could also do, 
If you hit the left arrow, by the way, you can just go back and edit what you've got. So I'll hit delete to delete the 60 degrees. I'll hit fraction. Say I want 2 pi over 3 in there, so on top I want 2. And then pi is down here in orange, so I'll hit shift again. Now I have 2 pi on top. I'll hit the down arrow to get the denominator. Type 3. The sine of 2 pi over 3. And maybe I want it in radians, so I'll use my DRG button here for radians. So shift DRG. Choose number 2 for radians. And it gives me square root of 3 over 2 in that case as well. So lots of things you can do with this calculator. It's very nice. Um, you can change the degrees to radians at the top. I think it may be under setup, so if we want to do that, say you want to tell it every angle is always going to be in radians, you could go to number, select number 4, and now you can see there's an R at the top. So it's going to assume that the angle you put in here is in radians, unless you specifically tell it otherwise down here with the DRG button. All right, so enjoy, enjoy the calculator. If you don't have one, think about getting something that does something like this, and I think you'll really like it.